Hi everyone, my name is Richard and today in this video we're going to be talking about the IELTS or the International English Language Testing System. Before we begin, if you haven't seen my videos before, my name's Richard, I'm from a city called Brighton in the south of England, but I've been living in Mexico for over 20 years where I've been teaching English. Okay, let's begin. IELTS, or the International English Language Testing System. What is IELTS? Well, basically IELTS is an English test. It's an English exam that includes reading, listening, writing and speaking sections. And it's very important because if you want to immigrate to the United Kingdom, Australia or Canada or if you want to go and study in a university or another educational establishment in one of those countries or other countries too, you will need to take the IELTS. So in this video we're just going to be looking very briefly at what the IELTS is um, and how the scoring system works. But before we look at the scoring system, there's one important thing to consider, and that is that there are actually two different IELTS. There is IELTS Academic, which is um, this one here, and we have also IELTS General Training. So the only difference between these two is that they both, both of these IELTS have listening, speaking, reading and writing. The listening and speaking sections on these two IELTS is exactly the same. The difference is in the reading and writing sections. Uh, the academic has more advanced, more technical, more advanced vocabulary, and more technical subjects. So depending on your goal depends which IELTS you need to take. If you are studying the IELTS for academic reasons or you want to pass the IELTS because you want to go to university in the United Kingdom or in Australia then you need to take the academic test but if, on the other hand, you wish to take the IELTS because you want to immigrate or get some other type of visa to live or reside in the United Kingdom, then you need to be looking at the general IELTS. So with that out of the way, Let's have a look at the IELTS scale. So the IELTS scale is the same for the general test and for the academic test. Although later on we'll see there is a difference in the way the writing section is marked. But the scale, the overall scale is the same. And it runs from 9, which is the maximum band it's called the IELTS band. It's the maximum band you can get is number nine down to one. Actually, it goes to zero, but zero, you would get zero if you failed to sit the test. So I haven't put zero on here. So here I've put a very basic summary of the levels. Um, and I've written here on this side in English, native, would be like a native speaker, advanced, upper intermediate, intermediate, lower intermediate, beginner. The reason I've done that is because maybe you already have an idea of your level. Uh, these levels here correspond to the CEFR, which is the Common European Framework for Language Learning. If you're currently studying English in a school or have taken a test recently, you may already know which level you're at. So this can give you some idea, a rough idea, an approximate idea of your current IELTS band. So for example, nine points. If you want nine points on the IELTS, 
you need to be C2 level, which is basically the same level English as a native speaker. My level of English is C2. I would be band 9 on the IELTS. C1 level, also a very good level of English. You would get between 7 and 8 points on the IELTS. A very, very, very good score. Generally speaking, in the real world, you are not going to need more than those points for any academic institution. So going down the list, if you were a B2 level, you would be looking at between five and a half and six and a half on the IELTS. Intermediate level or B1, you'd be looking at between four and five. Going down the list, A2, two and a half to three and a half. And if you're a beginner, you'd be looking at an IELTS score of about one or two. So what band should you be aiming for? Well, basically, if you are looking to take the IELTS to enter a United Kingdom university to study for a bachelor or a master degree, you are going to need minimum six and a half points in many universities. And looking at the list, earlier on I looked at the list of the top universities in the United Kingdom and nearly all of them are require a minimum score of seven, including that you must get a minimum of seven in each of the four areas or a minimum, some of them say a minimum of 6.5 in each of the four areas. It depends on the university. So what that means is, um, if you got, for example, in the listening, because in a minute I'll explain the IELTS scores a bit better, but if you got uh, a six in the listening and a nine in the, in the speaking, that wouldn't be good enough because you need, in a lot of universities, a minimum of seven in listening, speaking, reading and writing. So if your, your goal is to study for a bachelor degree or a master degree in a United Kingdom university, you are aiming for, or you should be aiming for, seven points on the IELTS band scale minimum. If you don't get that, you won't get into the university. Now, if you're talking about other requirements, for example, a visa to enter the UK is very complicated because there are many types of visas. But if you were applying for a general visa, again, you would probably need seven. If you were applying for a visa because you or residency, because you married somebody from the United Kingdom, then I think the requirement is like a four uh, and they only test the listening and speaking. So you need probably I put a link below to the UK immigration website and another link to uh, a site where they have a list of the entry requirements for UK universities so that you can see more specifically what the actual requirements are. So let's carry on and let's look at how the uh, IELTS is scored. So basically the same one to nine band scale is used for the listening, reading, writing, speaking sections. So you will get from one to nine on your listening, from one to nine on your reading, from one to nine on your writing, and one from one to nine on your speaking. And then those scores will be averaged out. So for example, if you got 6.5 on the listening, 6.5 on the reading, five on the writing and seven on the speaking, that would give you an average of 6.25. Uh, the, the IELTS band doesn't go in 0 0.25 segments. It goes from six to 6.5. So the number will be rounded up or rounded down. So in this case, you would get 6.5. If you got 4, 3.5, 4, 4 would give you 3.875, would be rounded up to 4. You would get your final score would be 4. And our example C, we've got 6.5, 6.5, 5.5, 6, 
it will give you an average of 6.125. That would be rounded down to 6 because the IELTS goes 6, 6.5, 7, 7.5. You can't have 6.25. Good, so let's have a look at um, how each section is scored, starting with the listening, the listening section. So the listening section is pretty straightforward, the scoring. There are 40 questions, and depending on how many questions you get right would depend on your IELTS band scale for that section, the listening section. For example, if you got 16 points correct, or 16 questions correct out of the 40, that would give you an IELTS band of 5. 23 would be a 6. 30 would be 7. 35 would be 8. And of course, 40, if you've got 40 questions correct, that would be perfect, so you would get nine. So the listening, pretty straightforward. What about the reading? The reading is pretty straightforward too. It's pretty much like the listening. The only difference here is that, as I said at the beginning, you have the academic IELTS and the general IELTS, is that on the academic IELTS, you get a higher band score for the same number of points that you have correct. So again, like the uh, listening, there are 40 questions. If you got 15 questions correct out of the 40 on their academic reading, you would be band five. Uh, if you got 15 correct on the general reading test, you would only be band four. Uh, so again, 30, for example, 30, on the academic, 30 questions correct out of the 40 on the academic test will give you an IELTS scale of 7. And 30 here, only 6. So you're probably thinking it's better to take the academic test. Not necessarily because the reason that you get more points on the academic test is that the subjects and the vocabulary are more technical and more difficult. It's a more difficult test. It's more difficult to get... 40 questions correct on the academic than it is on the general reading. That's why you get a higher score. And anyway, you need to take the test which is appropriate for your objective. So if you're studying to go to university, you need to take the academic test. So let's carry on with the writing section. Now, in the writing section, there are two tasks. And each of the two tasks is marked according to the following criteria. First of all, task one is marked or assessed according to the task achievement. What this means is, did you basically, did you answer the question? Did you achieve what was required of you? Task two is marked according to the task response. Basically, that means did you respond to the question that you were asked correctly? Next, we have coherence and cohesion. This is applied to both tasks. Coherence basically is, is what you wrote understandable and cohesion very basically is does it flow in a logical Manner. So here they'll be looking at the way the paragraphs are organised, how you linked ideas, how you referenced other ideas in your text. Lexical response, that's a big word for vocabulary, basically. It just means vocabulary. Did you use appropriate vocabulary? Did you use a wide range of vocabulary? Did you use collocations? Did you make any spelling mistakes? Finally, we have grammatical range and accuracy. Basically, is the grammar good? Did you use the correct tenses? Did you structure your sentences correctly? Did you use the correct punctuation? And when they look at this or the lexical resource, they'll be looking at the number of errors that you made in these two areas, and they'll be deducting points from your score for every error that you make or every group of errors that you make. So 
this or these four criteria, you will get a grade or a band score on each one, and then the average will be taken to give your overall band score on the writing section. So for example, if you got 5.5 on your task achievement or response, 6 on your coherence and cohesion, 6 on your lexical resource, and 6.5 on gra grammatical range and accuracy, that would give you a final score of 6, which wouldn't be enough if you wanted to go to a UK university. It's important to remember one other thing, and that is of the two writing tasks, task two is worth double task one. What does that mean? Task one will be banded according to the criteria above here that we just discussed. So you will get a final score on task one. And task two will be banded or given a score according to the same criteria apart from the first one which would be task response and not task achievement which is on task one it will be given a score in the same way and that will also receive an overall score but the task two score is worth double the task one score on your final writing score so for example if you got band eight on task one and band 6 on task 2, your final band would be 6.5, not 7. So that's something to bear in mind that task 2 is more important than task 1. Let's carry on then finally with the reading section, the last section. How is the reading section assessed? Well, it's very similar to the written section, uh, but this time they'll be looking at fluency and coherence. Is the response fluent? Does the response make sense? They'll be looking at lexical resource the same way they did with the writing, the range of vocabulary, appropriate vocabulary, things like that. They'll be looking at the grammatical range and accuracy as they did with the writing, and finally, they'll be looking at your pronunciation. Do you pronounce the words correctly? Can people understand? You could have the best English in the world. You could have perfect vocabulary, perfect grammar, perfect fluency, perfect coherence. But if nobody understands what you're saying because your pronunciation is terrible, then it's not worth anything, is it? you will fail. So once again, the four scores of those areas, each, each criteria, sorry, is given a number of points and they are added together and then the average is taken and that will be your final band in the speaking. So that's everything for the IELTS today. I probably will return with some more IELTS videos. This video today was just an introduction. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's useful for you. If you're a Spanish speaker, check out some other videos of my channel. I've got a lot of Spanish speaking videos. I've also got an app in the Google Play Apple App Store, English called Richard. If you're more advanced, I have here on my channel an advanced English course. I'll put the link below in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you soon with some more videos. Goodbye.